to all uh, for all of your support and all of your hard work. Um, I've been in classrooms and I've been seeing you multitasking, helping your children, helping many of your children log on, cooking, cleaning, and do, working. And you're amazing. Your students are also amazing. And we appreciate all of your support. So I, I, I'm just in awe of how well you have reacted to this um, situation that we're all in. And I thank you. And I wanted to know if Ms. Evans, do you want to make a quick comment before we begin? I just wanted to say that I agree wholeheartedly with Ms. McGlaris. Good afternoon, parents. You have been so incredible during this time. The best partners we could have ever asked for during this time. So we just thank you and continue to encourage you to work with us. We appreciate you so very much. And thank you all for being here. And thank you to all of you who work together on this workshop. I know it will be very, very, very informative. So thank you, Ms. McGlaris, Ms. Reimer, Mrs. Austin. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Let us begin. All right, so I'm going to begin by presenting. Da, 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 da. That's my presenting music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and here we go. All right. So this is our invitation. And so here is our agenda. I will be speaking first, then Ms. Reimer, then Ms. Marcus. We will take times for questioning and answering. I see that uh, you're very proficient in your norms and muting. I also want to let you know that you are being recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, please just uh, turn off your camera, but don't log out of the meeting. And we're gonna begin with, um, I, I will be reviewing the foundational skills. Um, I created a literacy toolkit for you to have. Now you may have had access to one or few of these documents, but I wanted to put one toolkit in order that will help every level of early childhood. So I hope I did a good job with that. We'll see. And then Ms. Reimer has some fabulous websites that she is going to show. She is our ESL teacher. They're not only fabulous for ENL students, but for everyone. And Ms. Marcus is coordinating and has coordinated our school newspaper, so to speak, the Daily Reporter. It's a virtual newspaper. It's terrific. And if we have time, and I, I just have a few additional websites, but you can reference those later. You'll all get a copy of the agenda. Um, and if you want copies of the toolkit, I will post them on my website, on my classroom, and teachers can post it. And also, I will send it to Ms. Jimenez, and all you have to do is just say, I attended the workshop, please send me the literacy toolkit. So we'll begin by saying that to start, all good reading programs have five pillars within them. For early childhood, the first three pillars, the foundational pillars, phonemic awareness, phonics, and fluency, they're the pillars that need solid work in order for your children to be able to comprehend. And when we read, the ultimate goal of reading is comprehending what we read. So these are the building blocks, phonemic awareness, phonics, and fluency. Now, a lot of people are unfamiliar with what I'm sorry, phonemic awareness is, and it refers to the ability to the individual to identify the individual sounds in a language. And those sounds are specific to written letter letters, and that would be phonics. So phonemic awareness is the sounds, and phonics is the translating the sounds into letters and words and a whole alphabetical principle and kind of like breaking the code. All right. So I want to show you my toolkit, which many of you have seen. And now you've seen this, but this has to do with phonemic awareness. And the number one indicator of a child being able to read proficiently is having solid phonemic awareness skills, knowing the sounds that each letter makes and knowing the individual sounds within the words and isolating those sounds. And I'm, I'll show you as we move on in our toolkit. So we have a program called Foundations. It's an excellent program. I, I hope 
that one day every school in the city has this program. We have it and uh, it's our first year officially using it. So this has been a little bit of a struggle for second graders, but we're hoping as it goes on, the kindergarten and the first grade next year, this will be their second year. And <clears throat> we're hoping that they become very proficient in the phonemic awareness skills. So you see the chart, we have the letter, picture, the sound and the word. So we say A, apple, A. Ah. So we have to know our sounds. And one thing with the sounds is New Yorkers in particular and me included, we don't, we want to leave off the schwa and the schwa is that little uh sound. So you don't want to say uh, the sound for B is B. You want to really clip the sound and do B, B, right? And not K, it's K. So if you're sounding out the word cat, it's K, A, T. And it's really important that we do that and that we're aware of, we're aware of it. Sometimes it's automatic and you just correct yourself. No, it's not huh, it's huh. Right. So we go through this, we go through these skills every day in foundations. So they know their pictures, their letters and their letter sounds. Another thing that's extremely important and I'll build on the skills, we have to know our short vowel sounds and our long vowel sounds. Right. The short sounds of A is, and the, you see the little symbol above the A, the short A sound, that's a brand. And the long sound is a Macron. And I will also show you how to mark it when um, I built a little toolkit for you. So the short sound of A is A, the long sound of A is A. The short sound of E is E, the, short, the long sound of E is E. The short sound of I is itch, and that is not, that monkey is itching, so it's itch, it's a silly picture, but that's our keyword. And the long sound of I is I. The, long, the short sound of O is ah. The long sound of O is O. Oh. The short sound of U is U. And the long sound of U, there's a little variant on the sounds. <clears throat> U as a mule and U as in rule mule and rule there's a slight difference of the sound all right so we have six syllable types all right i'm going to start with the open syllable during foundations we are going to learn our our syllable types and this is very important um it it helps children isolate sounds and ultimately read multisyllabic words that's why this is so so pivotal and that's why it's so greatly enforced in really good foundational programs so we see here we have the word go but how do we know it's not go or goo or ga well i'm going to tell you why because here's the rule Whoop. it has one vowel sound it ends with a vowel and the vowel has a long sound all right that's how we know when we see something a word like be or me or go it's not it it's the long vowel sound and so how do we mark it we underline the syllable type then we place an o underneath the syllable type to say that it's the open syllable and we mark the vowel with a macron that indicates that it's a long vowel sound now the children Children do this a lot. They do it every day. They have foundations every day for 30 minutes. And this is a very important first step in being able to decode words like because. They could identify that the BE, if they separate the syllable type, there's a long vowel sound. And that the letter Y can be a vowel in an open syllable. It has the long sound of I. And in multisyllabic words, it has the long sound E, as in baby. So there's two little rules that show you the different pronunciations of, of Y as a vowel. The next syllable type, we've been doing a lot, um, especially in kindergarten. The ability to absolutely to be able to see, for especially kindergartners, at the end of kindergartners, for them to be able to see 
<clears throat> that this word is cat, not cape, and that there's a there's a rule. Um, there's I'm sorry, there's a rule, and the vowel is short. All right. So here are the rules of the short vowels of the uh, closed syllable type. The syllable has one vowel. The vowel is followed by one or more consonants, and the vowel sound is short and it's marked with a brev. All right, so here's an example of how you would mark it. You underline the syllable, you write a C underneath the, uh, underneath the line, I'm sorry, underneath the line and the syllable type, you see that it's closed, and you mark the vowel with a brave. That's a little U-shape mark on top of the vowel, the short vowel sound. So we pronounce those words cup, whip, and last. We want the children to be able to read it with automaticity. Initially, they're going to read cup by isolating their sounds. This is very early on. Uh, but as they get more exposed to the rule, they're reading it quickly, cup, whip, last. Then we have the vowel consonant E rule. And we like to teach this one right after the closed syllable rule because this E is telling the A that it's long. And they pronounce the A, A instead of A. Ah. All right, so it has the vowel consonant E combination. There's the vowel, there's the consonant, there's the E. The E is silent at the end of a word. The vowel has a long sound. And how do we mark it? We always underline the syllable we write what the syllable type is. This is a vowel consonant E syllable type. We mark the vowel with a macron. This is the, the sign that says we read the I as I. All right. And then you cross out the final E. All right. So these things will be very helpful for, for you as you're doing your homework and when your child is reading with you decoding rules. Now there are many vowel teams. These are just some examples. In foundations, they're called D syllable because they contain a double vowel combination. That's why they call it the D syllable rule. And there are several vowel combinations. The two vowels together make one sound. The challenge is to know and apply the various spelling rules. Most of the time, the team AI will appear and you know there's there's different rules for different vowel teams. Um, but for the AI D syllable type, if you, it, the rule is AI appears in the middle of a word and AY appears at the end of a word. These are things that are really going to help children spell and read and decode. Then there's the control R syllable. We're almost done. Syllable type AR, ER, IR, OR, UR. They contain a single vowel followed by an R. So in there, we don't hear the vowel. The vowel is not short and it's not long. It's controlled by the R. So let me give you some examples of marking and some words. You underline the syllable type. You place the R underneath and the R means it's R controlled syllable type. And you circle the vowel and the letter and the, the vowel team. All right. So there's, we have no markings above the vowels because this is R controlled. All right, so you notice you don't hear the vowels in verb and girl and form and curl and mark. You hear the R. Then the last syllable type is the consonant LE. So you have a consonant and then an L and then an E. And it is always at the end of a multisyllabic word. It has only three letters. The consonant, then the letter L, and then the silent E. And how do we mark it? Okay, we underline each of the syllable types. So here you have a multisyllabic word, and this is how we would do this. I just want to indicate the syllable type. So we see the two syllable types, and this gets complicated. They do this in second grade. So we have an open syllable type and an consonant LE syllable type. So there's two separate markings. 
and we mark the first syllable type first, the open syllable type. We <clears throat> mark the A with a macron to show that it's long. And then the BLE is the consonant LE syllable type, and we just cross out the E because we see it's at the end of the word. All right? Pebble and tackle. So we're, we're marking both of the syllable types. So in this, if you didn't know how to do the closed syllable type, Peb, you could just go back to your toolkit and see, oh, this is how you mark a closed syllable type. This is why I have it. So I can send this to you virtually. And I have one more little rule chart to show you that's terrific, and I don't want to overwhelm you. So these are all of the rules which will apply in kindergarten all the way up to second. Um, it will be very helpful. I, you, I want you to read it over because it has some really helpful hints, like I-G-H. It has the long I sound and is usually followed by a T. Right? There's a lot of rules here that are worth looking at. Um, I know I keep this on the side when my child, is, when children are reading, because it's a quick reference. It's a very quick reference, especially if you look through a book and you see there's a lot of OW words, you could, you could point out the little rules, the little variances of how you spell, of how you would try the O and the OW. You can try them both. All right. So I wanted to just show you some of the things that I'm going to have avail available to you. I also have sight words, which is going to be part two of parent engagement. And I'm going to stop presenting. Oop, I'm sorry. And I just want to know if anyone has any questions. Now would be a time. All right. So I'm going to call on somebody, Jaden. Jaden Badri. All right. I just want to make sure. Did you understand anything? Do you have any questions at no. all? Or do you, okay. All right. All right. So I am going to now have Miss Reimer, our ESL teacher, present. She has really, she has excellent websites to show, and on the agenda that you're going to get from Miss uh, Jimenez those websites will be listed on there. So take it away, Ms. Reimer. Okay, hey there, nice to see me. So I'm gonna uh, go away from my face to present mode. And I wanna show you guys a couple of great resources that are absolutely free, maybe three if we have time, uh, to New York City students this year. The first one is free all the time to everybody everywhere. And you know, sometimes when you do not have access to the library as we do not have right now, it's great to find things that you can read online. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go to present here. I'm gonna show you one wonderful resource that is multilingual for our multilingual learners, people who have more than one language or are learning more than one language. Maybe your student only speak Spanish, or you speak Spanish, or you would speak English and Spanish, but you would like them to learn Spanish or Arabic or whatever language, this website will show you lots of great um, different books, and it can read to the students in various languages. Now, the other thing is that you can also read in the language of either, of either English or Spanish. Not, you know, not at the same time, but but you can hear them both. So I'm going to show you. This is called UniteForLiteracy.com. I'm going to type that in the chat because it's such a valuable resource and it's absolutely free. It's really great for students up to grade, I think even grade three, some of the books. And is Unite. Oh, I'm going to try here. Hold on. UniteForLiteracy.com. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this is this is a book I was reading with my students today, Our Good Food. I'm going to go back. I'm going to return to the beginning. And it has literally hundreds of books. These are all just books that I was looking at today 
with the keywords food. So you can search for the kind of book you want to read. And as you can see, you can look for books that are written in either English or Spanish. These are the books that are written in Spanish. And it is also lots and lots of books. I can go down and you can see that each of the books, they're in little collections. So this one is all about movement. This one down here is all about math, counting, play, uh, uh, food. And so as you can see, the books are organized. And as I go this way, there are even more in each collection. It is a really marvelous way to read with your, with your student. And let me just show you how it will work. So I'm going to go back to English. But when I go to me, and it's absolutely free, you don't need any, you don't have to sign up or anything. It'll just say location at the beginning. You close that pop up um, and then you can begin reading. But let's take a look at, I don't know, loud and quiet. And, we're, and this is going to read to us in both English and Spanish. Oh, wait, I should show you how to do that. Sorry. So in order to have it read in more than one language, I go to this button that looks like the planet with lines. And I can get a second narration aside from English. Now, it has more than just Spanish. You might notice that it has several different languages. It has even more than these. Unfortunately, it does not yet have Bangla, but soon I'm sure it will but many languages it has. So if you wanted to learn French just for fun, you could, you could collect, you could click that one. So I click Spanish because um, many of my, of my students speak Spanish. And now I'm going to click on a word, uh, a book rather. And let's say loud and quiet. And this one will be a fairly easy book for like kindergarten, first grade. And if I click this, you won't be able to hear it. But it just oh, read it to me in English. Then if I click this down here, the Espanol, as you might guess, it will read, it will read the uh, translate to Spanish. And then to make the book change pages, I go to the to the arrow. And that turns the pages of the book. And this is a, a book that kids love because it, it's very much about the you know, the way that we experience the world, which is through our five senses. But there are lots and lots of books. Some are very simple books and some are more complex. I'll show you an example of one of the easier books and then one of the harder books. So if I look at uh, Funny Foods is pretty easy. Say Something Nice is pretty easy. And it's great because you can re listen to the book being read and you can read after the book. Say something nice. And look, very simple. Just hello, picture clue to help you understand what's being said in English and Spanish or Tagalog or Arabic or whatever you want to hear it in. How are you? So this is a very easy book that would be great for kindergarten. But there are also some books with higher lexiles, which means harder words. And that would be all of the books that have to do with the zoos. So the aquariums in zoos help to make a whole bunch of these books for this website because they believe in it also. And I love bats. I have a soft spot in my heart for bats because they eat mosquitoes and I really hate mosquitoes. <laughs> so so anyway, uh, this is uh, one about bats. And you can see it gets a little bit more challenging to read. Let's say up to maybe the second or third grade mammal, uh, mammal level, I mean. And again, you can hear it in both languages. Very engaging, mostly nonfiction. There's a little bit of fiction, but it's mostly nonfiction. That's the first thing I wanted to show you. And again, that's uniteforliteracy.com. 100% free. I'm going to show you a different uh, thing now, and that is discovery learning. 
So New York City has paid for discovery learning for all of its students for this year. And I'm hoping that they will continue. You will need two things to use discovery learning. You will need to go to this place. Oh, sorry, not that one. Hold on, where are you? Okay, so if you put in NYC discoveryeducation.com. Okay, I already signed in for one student and I'm gonna show you how you sign in after. So when you go in to sign in for your student, you'll go to a page like this. But I signed in for one student today and I showed him how to use it. And so let's say this is my student, Alexander. He might have some assignments assigned through Discovery Education. And Discovery Education is associated with the Discovery Channel on TV. So they have lots and lots of wonderful videos and resources, including things like a virtual field trip, like this. You could go to different places uh, virtually uh, going on a field trip. You could go to places like the tundra, the frozen tundra, or watch professional football players work out, or li uh, listen to a scientist tell you about being happy. And these experiences have videos as well as interactive games and things that teachers can assign. So let's say if we just wanted to experience the thing with the polar bears. I love polar bears. So this is what it looks like. It says field trip overview. Click the arrow below to get started. And we would start on our field trip. Oh, wait, I wrong arrow. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hide this box so I can see the right arrow. Okay, here's our all of our pages. So the first thing is some text. Then we will also have, uh, it says it's showtime. That's where we see a video. Extend your learning. This would be some things that you could do to continue to learn about the topic. It's a really wonderful resource. And again, it is discoveryeducation.com. Now, here's where it ties into Imagine Learning. What you need to access this website or Imagine Learning, which is great for building practice in math and literacy, um, is that you need to have the student number, the OSIS number, which you use to get on MyOn. It's nine numbers. And I have it for all my students. I think all the teachers have it for their students. So you can get your classroom teacher, if you ask them, they will provide the number to you. So if I go to, this is where you, how you do it. So I went to, I'm gonna go to, well, let's say I typed in, cause it's gonna take me to Alexander's page now if I type it in now. But I typed in uh, nycdiscoveryeducation.com. And then it would take me to something like this, to sign into Clever. This is what the students would have to do. They would go to where it says students, find your username or reset your password. They want to reset their password because they want to make it a password they remember. And that's the only two things they need. They need the OSIS number. And so I'm going to put in one right now for another student of mine. And 606, 446, and then the, the birth date. So he was born in March. This is not for any of the students that go to class with your students. This is an older student, but uh, he gave me permission to, to use his, his information today, and his parents did too. That's 2010. Just to show you how it works, then I would say continue. Now then, there's the student name. I would just write that down. It says, this is your username. Please write this down as you cannot change it. 
So if you have a very common name, you might have some numbers after it, but otherwise it's very simple. Now, I'm giving a, Nash, a password. That's dinosaur, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R. He can change it another time, but this is just to start him off. Dinosaur, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R, update password. And see, it's, all, it's just as simple as that, to sign in. You use the same thing to be able to sign in to Imagine Learning. I'm just going to show you where we go from there. So I'm going to go to Anash, C, and the password is Dinosaur, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R, sign in. And then I'm going to show you all the great things you have access to once you get to Clever. So this is the App Center. What you would do next is go to the Teach Hub. We have all these other things too, but the Teach Hub is where we see that very many things that students can do, including Imagine Learning, which I have a heart by because I love Imagine Learning. It's a very good way for kids to learn. Imagine Math, and uh, Discovery Education. Now, these two things usually would cost $150 per each student to use them. But right now, no, it's absolutely free. So it's a good chance to use them. And I think it's going to go throughout the summer as well. Discovery Education is what I just showed you. We have some teacher pages. And then a whole bunch of stuff down here also that you can use, including the New York City Public Library, lots of great, oh, Rosetta Stone, if you want to work on learning a language, iReady, lots of great stuff. So I'm going to stop presenting and just see if there are any questions. I'm going to go back and uh, turn off presenting. And just see, does anybody have any questions? If you have a question, please let me know. No? Okay. So I guess I'm ready to turn it back over to Ms. McGlaris. Ms. Reimer, I have a question. Oh, yes. Please go ahead. Do the educators have access to this as well? Yes, we do. In fact, you can actually create assignments on Discovery. Not uh, You have access to Imagine Learning just to get data, and the parents do too. Um, but um, the Discovery Education... You can create assignments for your kids and link it up directly, boom, to Google Classroom so that the assignments are right there. <laughs> and how do they get on? Just with our regular login information? With what I just showed you. So they would need to say create a, create a, uh, a password, and then they put in the OSIS and their birthday. So just the same way I showed you, that's what they would do. So they would go to NYC discoveryeducation.com, which I typed it. I don't think I typed it. I'm going to type it in right now, but I'll, I'll send it also in, when we send out more information. And that's uh, NYC Discovery. Wait. Ah, here we go. NYC Discovery Education.com. I think that's correct. It might have a, um, a period there. Let me just double check. But in any case, the really beautiful thing is that it is absolutely free. And then uh, once they go to there, they would scoot down to where it says create a, a password, create your username and password. And they would just put it, type in the OSIS number, type in the birth date, and they get their username and they create the password. It's not very hard. You can do it. Especially if you're so smart. I make yeah, for teachers. Put in their DOE. Yeah, that's correct. So okay. teachers, you're right, Miss Hunt. They put in their DOE information there, exactly. username and password. Yep. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. Okay. Are you guys ready for me? We are right. ready for Miss Marcus and her Okay. Well, I've been sitting for a little bit while, a while, so I just need to stretch. So everybody who's still sitting, I need you to just stretch. You don't have to get up and down. Um, today during kangaroo, we looked at kangaroos. We actually hopped up in the air. If you want to bop in, up and down a couple times and get the blood going, and I'm going to say extra, extra, read all about it. So everybody, we're, I'm going to put on present now, 
and we're going to see the brand new PS138 remote reporter. And we're so excited about this first issue. It took a little longer than I hoped, but we're but I'm excited to show it to you. So right up here, you're going to see my and oh, we can see right now all the people who are looking at it. But this is when you get to the page and you get to it by going to your teacher's stream and she or he will post this page. You're going to get to this um, front page and it's not easy to look at it from this point of view. So what you do is go up to present mode and that's the upper right hand corner. And as you can see, I'm loading it up now. Um, you're seeing the front page, you're seeing some um, extraneous, some extra stuff down here. You shouldn't always, um, you're able, I don't know if you can move this around, but um, I will have to figure this out because it's showing me what slide we're on. And oh, there we go. And if you notice the, when each time you click, um, either it turns a page or animates something. So the first thing that you guys saw was the bird flying across. So here's our front page. I'm not going to go in detail about each page, but as you can see, the front page has to do with an interview with our brand new principal. And um, this little bio is about the student who who um, who did the interview with Miss uh, Miss um, Evans. I'm turning the page. There's more information, and we got the swirling, whirling New York Yankees. Um, so you're going to read this at your convenience, obviously. I'm not expecting you to read this all, take this all in. This is our pet parade. I was looking for a lot of pets and I didn't get that many. So thankfully, some of our teachers came to the rescue and I featured some of the teacher's pets. But um, the more the merrier. I, can, I mean, I can't get everybody's pet in every time, but we're hoping that this continues into the fall as well. So if if your, if your child's pet doesn't make it into the June issue, there's always September. Okay, keep if that works for um, everybody. Um, remote reviews. My kids all read Dragons Love Tacos. So if your kids did not hear it, here's the link. It's a hyperlink, so you can go right to Dragons Love Tacos. I'm not going to click on it, but you can at home. You can see the swirling, turning tacos. Since my lower grades did drawings, I have some illustrations, and then I have some opin the opinion writing about whether tacos are the best food or not. The upper grades, and there's the, there's the book um, itself. Um, oops, let me go back. If you miss something, you can always go back. So I'm going back, trying. Technology, help me out here. Oh, there we go. Um, so I included a hyperlink to how to draw dragons, which is in the upper, upper top here. From the second graders, I got their reviews of the book. So I'll keep going. And let's go on to slide six. Six through nine are creative writing. Uh, third graders um, and fourth graders um, gave me some wonderful poetry. I have some variations on um, Little Red Riding Hood that you can enjoy reading. This is Damien Garcia's, his continues to the next page. Oh, I love Ramen Soup by a third grader. Um, more third grade work. And this is a wonderful fourth graders poem on I Can Almost Touch the Stars. Um, this is more creative writing. Aris Beth in 202 did a wonderful story um, called The Magical Wand, an original story. We have another poem. And this last creative writing page features more shape poems that I did with the students and another variation on um, Little Red Riding Hood. Marvelous math. Now listen up, you guys. If you're listening, the first two girl and boy who are able to solve these riddles and get the, and parents, you can help. Um, and if you get this back to me, you're going to get a shout out in the next issue because I know the answers. And I know you can figure them out too. How to tell time. Cool optical illusions is a link. I know you all want to make slime at home. So here we go. This is, a, this is how to make slime at home. Um, 
an important detail. Please, children, do not make things on your own. Always have parents watching, not necessarily parents, but older siblings, adults, grandparents, guardians, whoever's in your household. Okay, next we've got what are tricks you could do at home. I know a lot of, not everybody has a lot of resources at home to do some fancy tricks. So this way, at least um, there are a little more um, a li limited ingredients to do the water tricks. Um, work it out, healthy living. We got some great posters from first graders. Um, this is the click to see the PS138 video on washing your hands. Now our amazing artworks. The next few pages are the amazing artworks. Please stop and see this Our Family Comes from Around the World video by Mr. Almas did the music. It features a famous poem by a famous poet named Marian Hoberman. Take a good look at this amazing art that, that our kindergartners and um, pre-K students did. This is courtesy of Miss McCusker's class did Picasso um, illustrations or self-portraits. And then we have more self-portraits. Um, here's my, an important note. If you want to see your art in the upcoming issue of the reporter, please send in clear, cl clear images. The clearer, the better, because um, it's hard for me to adjust the lighting for you. So you have to do really good shots, like above the pictures. Um, and due to all limited space, not all things can be included. Thanks for understanding. Um, and finally, important links and information. These are great websites that Ms. Mongia helped me assemble. Um, you can take a look at your, um, at your, based on your time. And um, I want to thank all the parents who helped me out sending in their wonderful children's work and teachers as well. Um, and let's keep it going. Let's, let's, let's include more kids, more, more stuff. And, um, I thank everybody for your support. Okay. Super amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Marcus, that was incredible. incredible. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So um, more exciting things to come. I'm working on a Spanish edition that yes. just needs a little tweaking, but a lot of tweaking. But I'm not a Spanish speaker, so I'll definitely need some eyeballs on that. <laughs> Muchas gracias. And, all right. thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Beautiful job. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. I'm done. You guys. All are right. Done. So I just want to again say thank you so much to the parents and teachers that came. Uh, I think we had resources for both parents and teachers. I will post the information on my site. I will send also to Miss. Actually, I'll leave it up right now. Um, if you want a copy of the literacy toolkit. You can request it through Ms. Jimenez, our parent coordinator. And here is her um, email address. Right here, mjimenez at schools.nyc.gov. So I thank you again for coming. And I'll give you uh, a minute to take a picture of that or write Ms. Jimenez's email down. And I'd love to leave the last comments for any questions, concerns, um uh, actually miss evans if you, if you want to just give your final thoughts we'd appreciate it i would love to yield my final thoughts to my to any parent who has anything to share what your thoughts are about the workshop uh was this helpful to you we would love to hear from the parents do we have parent teachers conference Yes, your par your teacher was setting that up with you and your mom. So please ask them to check in. They can sign in with, with your teachers on their Google pages. Okay. That's a great question. Thank you. Does any parent have anything that they'd like to share with us from the workshop that was helpful or anything at all that was good for them or that we might need to work on for next time? We are just excited about you being here. We want you to be a part of this, not just sitting down, but we want you to be involved. These are things we've planned for you and we want to know how you are seeing it. Please come in. Okay, Hudson, Mom. We love oh, it. Everything you guys do is amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.
I know someone else has something they want to say. I can see it on your faces. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Excellent. I see some comments. Thank you. Well, um, thank you so very much for coming again. Thank you, Miss McGlarith, Miss Reimer, Miss Marcus, Miss Mrs. La Austin, all of you, you're so incredible. Um, I couldn't have asked for better folk here at PS 138. Please, tomorrow is our family feud night. Please do not miss it. It's going to be so much fun. So please make plans to be with us tomorrow for Family Feud. It's going to be awesome. If you came to our dance party, you know that 138 knows how to throw a party. So we ask you to come back tomorrow and enjoy Family Feud with us. Thank you so much. We'll send you these resources because let me just say this because I think it's so important to say. A huge focus for me and for our staff for this year and going forward is for us to really build the foundational skills for our little ones in pre-K, K, and first grade. Because we recognize that if that foundation is strong, then we can really build and make them super spectacular for the upper grade. So please understand that we'll be offering more of these because there's going to be a huge push around ensuring that our little ones are strong and foundationally secure with reading so that they can be the superstars we know they are. So please continue to work with us. We appreciate you. And everyone have a great evening. We will see you tomorrow at Family Food. And thank you all so very much for coming. Have a great, great, great afternoon. All right. See you at Family Food, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I love family. Bye. 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 B